Hi there, fifth wheel owners. Today in your 2021 Vanley Beacon, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Hydrostar's Tandem Axle Line Kit. Along with our hydraulic line kit, we're going to be using Hydrostar's 1600 PSI actuator, and we're gonna be using Kodiak's disc brake conversion kit. We'll start up here at our actuator, and we're gonna take the longest line out of our line kit. This should be your 25 foot line. We're gonna thread it into our actuator here, and then we need to route it towards the back, towards our axles. Now here's a couple of tools that we're gonna be using along the way to assist us with getting this installed. And I highly recommend them. They're pretty much required if you wanna have a nice layout for your, the, your line routing, as well as having a wrench that's gonna be able to tighten them down enough with the 1600 PSI pressure we've got for output there. So these are line wrenches. You can tell because it's got just a small opening there, and we've got a lot of surface area to contact on the nut. You're gonna need this when tightening down your lines because you need that extra surface area there. If you use just a regular wrench, what'll happen is it will just round the, the nut off because it's made of a softer material in order for it to seal properly. And that softer material requires this extra surface area here in order to get it torqued down properly without damaging the actual nut. You can get these here at e-trailer. This is a line bending tool, which is really not required, but if you want to have a nice layout on your lines like we've done here, so we go straight over and then we put a 90 degree turn in it there, you're not gonna be able to put a 90 degree by just bending it with your hand. What'll happen is you'll end up kinking the line and then the line's useless. You'll have to replace it and buy a new one. With a line bender like this, it will wrap the line around the grooves uh, diameter here and that prevents it from kinking and gives you that nice clean look. So we'll be using this at several points. We use it again here to then turn it and go out the hole that we had drilled here in the side. I then drilled a half inch hole. This is where I was able to poke my line through to get it to pass through. You can see that 90 degree bend there and then we go out. I did take a piece of airline of uh, vacuum line tubing here and I slid it down the middle and then I slid it around the hose and pushed it through the hole there and that's gonna prevent our line from rattling or touching on the metal surface where we had drilled out the hole. We can then open up the door for our propane cabinet on the driver's side and our line passes through right there. We then put another 90 degree and go straight down. Once we get down to the frame here, we make another 90 degree bend and then we just head towards the rear of our trailer. We use the included clips and self-tapping screws to attach it along the way so that way we have a nice sturdy line. We're not gonna have vibrations on it all the way down. We follow all the way down till we hit to the back of the frame. Once we get to the back of the frame here on the side, we then go to the bottom of the I-beam here and we just secure it along that all the way until we get to where our first axle is. Once we got here, we did put a little 90 in it here to get around the hanger and then we 90 it back. And this is our first union that comes in our kit. This is the four-way union. You'll have two unions in the kit as far as like multi-tap unions. This has got four. You've got one on this side, one on this side, and there's two here on this side here. We use the included self-tapper to run it right up into the I-beam here. I did stack a couple of washers on top just to space it down a little bit. It makes it easier to get your wrench on the uh, lines here to tighten them down if you give yourself a little bit of a gap there. You can just uh, stack up anything really on there. You could use a couple washers like I did, or if you have a little piece of scrap metal or something, you could just use that as a spacer. Uh, I do recommend it though, because it can be difficult to tighten these lines if it's straight up uh, against the bottom of the I-beam there. So now out of this block out of the four connections we've got, your second longest line is going to be your line that goes from one side to the other. So that's this one here. And it connects to this union, it goes across to the other side where it's gonna to connect to the three-way union. The port here on the back, this is one of two of the shortest lines. You'll get two short lines in your kit and those are the ones that go from one axle to the axle back there. So we come out of this, it runs around and it goes to the axle back there. And lastly, our flexible line here is gonna go from our caliper up to our union here. You can see our connection there, where we're all, all connected. On your short lines here, where they go to the other axle, you just have just a regular union, it's just one-to-one. -one. It just connects our line to our brake hose, and our hose then goes down to the caliper. Over here, you can see our three-way union. We again use the self-tapper to run this one up into the I-beam and I did stack a couple washers on this one as well. This connection here is the, the medium size line in your kit that runs across. We put a little 90 in it and connected it there. The middle connection here in our union goes to our brake hose down to our caliper. And then the third connection here on this union is the short line that'll go to the axle 
here at the back. And just like on the other side, it just kind of loops around, goes to a single union that connects to our brake hose, and then goes down to our caliper. All of our lines here will tighten using a 3 8 inch line wrench. The single unions here don't have any hole for a self-tapper to secure it to the bottom of the frame, so you will have to hold this union when tightening down your lines. You'll use a half inch wrench on your unions. Once you've got all your components installed, we do need to bleed the brakes to get all the air out of the system, so that way when our actuator here applies, we've got solid fluid pressure all the way back. If there's any air in it, it'll compress and you're going to get uneven braking and it's also going to reduce the performance of the whole system. You may not be able to stop. So we need to make sure we get this all the way bled out. We're going to remove the cap. Make sure you have the cap off when bleeding because it can actually suck the uh, rubber uh, seal right out of the cap. So we're going to get that off and then we just want to fill this up all the way. I've already got it topped up and we're using DOT3 brake fluid. So we're going to head back to the wheels at the back, but we're going to need an assistant here at the front to actuate the actuator here. There's two ways they could do that. They could pull the breakaway switch pin, that's going to turn the system on, or you could hook it up to your truck and you could use the manual slide on your uh, brake controller to activate the system. So let's head back to the wheel now and we're going to get those bled out. So we're starting here at the furthest wheel from our actuator. So our actuator is located on the front a little bit towards the driver's side and our line runs down the driver's side. So that makes this the farthest from that. If you start at the furthest, that means you're going to get the majority of your lines bled just from this one. And you only really are just doing the short distance that goes to each caliper from there. So this will speed up your bleeding process. So back here at the wheel, we've got our, our tire off. We've got our new systems installed. You've got two sets of bleeder screws on your caliper here. We want to make sure we're using the one that's at the top. You can ignore this one at the bottom. We won't need that for anything. This is going to squirt out with pretty high pressure. So I recommend you have a clear hose here so you can see inside the hose to verify if you've got air bubbles or a solid stream coming out. And just poke that right over it. You can then have the hose go down into any kind of container. We're just using an old uh, drinking bottle here that we drilled a hole in the top, but you can just use a pan. A pan would work fine. Uh, do keep in mind though that high pressure uh, we kind of poked it down through the cap because if it's just in a pan, it can kind of whip around a little bit because of that high pressure. We'll then take our 5 16 wrench that's going to fit on our bleeder here. And we're going to have our assistant go ahead and turn on the system. So it's pressurized. We can hear it. We're going to crack it loose and we're just going to let fluid flow. You can go ahead and turn it off until we get a nice solid stream just like this. What you're seeing down here, this is feeding back up, but if you see these bubbles like this coming out of our hose, you're not done yet. You want to have a solid stream coming out. Once you've got a solid stream coming out of this one, you want to make sure you go back up to your actuator and top it off because it does push through the fluid pretty fast. And if the system goes dry when bleeding, you have to start all the way over from the very beginning. I do recommend that at each wheel, you do stop and check your actuator and make sure that it is topped up on fluid. Once you're all done, you can then reinstall your cap and we're ready to hook up to our truck and hit the road. And that completes our installation of Hydrostar's tandem axle line kit on our 2021 Van Lay Beacon.